Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepzani with your top stories this Thursday. Zimbabwe Finance Minister Tendai Biti presents the 2013 national budget today. The minister is under pressure to build up the economy and find money for scheduled elections. Biti's 2012 budget went off the rails midway through the year while the economy recovery of the last few years has hit the rocks. Last week, Bitti was forced to admit that the GDP growth would be nowhere near his initial 9.4% focus. The minister said the government was looking at a 400 million US dollar budget black hole in the period leading up to the end of the year. South African football fans stoned the Zambian Chipolo Polo bus in Johannesburg after the team defeated Bafana Bafana at the FNB Stadium in Soweto. Zambia goalkeeper Kennedy Mwene was hit on the head as he was boarding the bus following the Nelson Mandela Challenge win. Mwene, who also plays for the Free State Stars, received stitches for his injuries. Two boys aged 12 and 13 have been detained for allegedly throwing stones. The South African Football Association is investigating the incident. A high court in Kitwe, Zambia has sentenced a 35-year-old woman to 18 months in prison for killing a housewife. The defendant, Judith Ngandwe, claimed that 41-year-old nurse Charity Muyangana accused her of flirting with her husband. Mrs. Justice Mukanga convicted Ngandwe, who admitted to manslaughter. The court learned that on April 19th this year, Ngandwe was at a Hollywood bar where the two had an, a disagreement which resulted into a fight. The court heard that Ngandwe attacked Mrs. Muyangana, who sustained severe injuries and died on May 9th this year. A Zimbabwean church in Luton, England, led by gospel singer Ivan Combo's husband, Bishop Admar Kasi, has been reported by another church for re creating disturbance by playing loud gospel music. Upperview Ministries, led by Bishop Kasi, hold their services on the second floor and Universal Church on the first floor at a shopping mall on George Street. Universal Church filed 23 objections as to why Upper Ministries should not worship in the same building due to noise and disturbance. It seems that the battle of the churches will continue after Luton Borough councillors last week passed a resolution allowing Upperview to continue using the meeting room. Now, in today's special feature, Liam talks to Zimbabwean Education Minister David Coltert about the planned closures of unregistered schools and colleges in the country. Earlier this week on ATV, we reported the news that the Zimbabwean government has continued its crackdown on unregistered colleges and private schools. It's thought that up to 200 institutions are going to be closed down as part of this crackdown. This follows a similar amount that was shut down back in May, earlier this year. Just to put this into a bit of context, the number of private learning institutions in Zimbabwe has rocketed over the past decade. This is due mainly to the country's public education system collapsing. So officials are now clamping down on schools that fail to follow a certain amount of laid down education rules. The institutions that are going to be closed down are said to be three things. They are operating illegally, failing to comply with minimum standard requirements of education, and many of them are employing unqualified teaching staff. Up until recently, this issue has not been the top priority for the education department. Understandably, they've had bigger problems on their hands, namely fixing an education system that has been in a deep crisis with limited funding, lack of resources, and thousands of teachers on strike. But these illegal schools are indeed a worry for the government, and it's something they are looking to deal with right now. I'm pleased to say that, the, that David Coltart, the Education Minister, joins us now from Zimbabwe. Thanks for joining us, Minister. So, why now? This problem has been around for a while. Why have you chosen this time to deal with it? We've got to put it in context. When I took over the, as Minister of Education, in 2009, the education sector was in crisis. There was a high degree of lawlessness, and it's taken quite a while to stabilize the sector and to get uh, schools open, textbooks delivered to schools, 
teachers back into classrooms. And we always knew that there was this uh, additional problem of unregistered schools, schools that had mushroomed up in this climate of lawlessness. And and so uh, we had to ultimately deal with it. But, of course, it wasn't a, a priority. Our greater priority was to get schools open, not to close them down and to get textbooks into to schools. Having done that now, we, we're now trying to uh, take stabilization as a further step forward by looking at the schools that have not been properly registered, uh, schools perhaps which do not have buildings which comply with our minimum building standards, in essence schools that constitute a threat towards children. And that's why you're now seeing, after you know, three years into my tenure, moves being taken to, to regularize schools and to shut down those schools which are perceived to be dangerous. A similar move of closures happened back in May. What has happened to those schools and the children that went to them? Well, what we say to schools is that if they regularise their position, apply for registration, if they show that they've been raised regarding toilet facilities, buildings and, and the like, that they, they may be given provisional uh, registration. I can't give the the minute detail today about which schools have been, uh, which are still closed, which were closed down then. But the, the closure of a school isn't necessarily permanent. Uh, if a school has not applied to be registered, in, then clearly, and, and, they, and they're operating, they, they're operating illegally. Uh, and a decision like this is taken. But having done so, once we've got an application for registration in, we do everything possible to to keep schools open. So in, what you're saying is in these illegal schools, it's not just the standards of education, but there's other factors that could actually put children's well-being at stake. Well, that that's the essence. It's a variety of things that we look at. Obviously, uh, we look at the buildings, we look at the toilet facilities, um, but also we we have a look to see who's actually teaching. Are they untrained teachers? Are they qualified? Uh, we have a, a series of checks, of course, to ensure that there aren't pedophiles um, you know, posing as teachers, the, the issues like, like that. And, of course, some of these schools um, are run by people who are solely interested in profit, not in education, and they charge a fortune and actually don't deliver a very good quality of education. Minister, how widespread is this problem? Well, it's widespread in the sense that there are undoubtedly schools throughout the country which are unregistered. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it's widespread in the sense of it being a majority of schools. It's, it's still uh, a minority in terms of numbers of school, schools, although the geographical spread is wide. How will you go about moving the children from the unregistered schools into properly registered schools? Because that's quite a task, isn't it? Well, exactly. And, and that's why, you know, we've got to be very cautious. And that's why we haven't uh, moved on these schools before now, because it's been critically important that we get government and local council schools so that there are some alternate schools. It would be wrong to to close these schools down if there's no alternate school available. And and even now, though we've br brought a degree of stabilization to the sector, even now when we close the school down, like we've been discussing this afternoon, there, there isn't necessarily another school. And in, in that instance, we have to move very quickly to try and regularize so that children are not prejudiced. Ultimately, our primary concern is for children and you know, it's all very well closing a school down because it hasn't got the, the right size building. But uh, children are obviously going to be safer in that small building than they, they would be out in the streets. And so we, we do bear, bear that in mind. And finally, could I just ask you, why do you think there are so many private schools in Zimbabwe? Well, it, 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 that's a very interesting question. We have 8,500 schools in Zimbabwe, and I was surprised to learn. I'm a lawyer. I'm not an educationist. So I didn't know a great deal about our education system prior to coming in. And I was surprised to learn that the vast majority of our schools, in fact, are non-government schools. 
uh, there's a tiny minority of government schools in, in our country. So Zimbabwe has a deep-rooted history of private education. Uh, in fact, for black Zimbabweans, most of them prior to the end of white minority rule got their education through mission schools. And I think that that culture has continued. A lot of parents are very interested in their, their children. They've been concerned about the quality of education provided by uh, government schools and perhaps local council schools. And, and perhaps there's been no education at all. There's been huge growth in, in, in cities like Harare. We haven't been able to expand services and we haven't for well over a decade been, been able to build new schools. And so parents have taken the, the issue into their own hands and uh, along with teachers have got these schools going. And we applaud that. Um, we applaud that initiative and we don't just want to, to close these schools down willy-nilly. We want to protect children and as, so, and as far as possible facilitate these schools to be pro properly reg registered so that they um, can provide an education where government can't provide that education. Minister Coltart, thank you very much for joining us on ATV this evening. That's fine. It's picture of the daytime and we have given the title to Brighton Kamusoka for this lovely picture of his family. Send us your pictures and you could be on the big screen tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Tune in tomorrow when the boys will be discussing the weekend's Premier League action. Have a good evening.